Hey guys, um, I'm Matthew Ho, uh, part of the winning team at um, Startup Weekend Melbourne, the first one. Uh, yeah, it's been an incredible journey over the last um, yeah six, seven months, uh, gone from uh, pitching an idea at Startup Weekend um, to now living in Melbourne uh, and working on my startup full time, which is Native Tongue. Uh, I remember when I came up with the idea, it's something I've been thinking about for a pretty long time since I was at um, university. Uh, and I remember getting on the plane, actually the night before, I was doing some wireframes, just over a mobile app, wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. And then pitching it on the plane to the person sitting next to me, because I knew that um, they they really couldn't move anywhere, so they're the best people to pitch to, I find. Um, and then I went into the office all day, and uh, I pitched it to everyone in the office, and they quite liked the idea and refined it. I pitched it to my housemate, um, who I was staying with at the time, just for a couple of days, um, and she helped refine the idea a bit and drilled me and then I arrived at the startup weekend about half an hour late and then um, yeah I just got up and I pitched uh, so I probably pitched it like 15 times that day uh, so it was pretty polished um, and then yeah we built it we won um, but I guess what's relevant for you guys is uh, what I got out of it and what the experience was like I think you have to be really focused that weekend and I think one thing that helped me was that um, I didn't have any distractions that weekend. I flew down to Melbourne and that's all I did. I just worked on startup weekend stuff. I was able to just block out everything. Um, also had some uh, prior experience from uh, Next Digital with designing websites. Um, so that helped and I had a pretty good team, uh, guys that were experienced, uh, like James Drixer in my team. Um, we were able to project manage it quite well, worked out what our priorities were and our backlog. We actually built it on the first day and then just refined it on the second day. Um, I think you got to focus on just building like a, a prototype, not just focusing on building something small, but still have like a big vision, um, something that's doable over the weekend because they got to see like what you can actually build and deploy as well, not just a PowerPoint slide. Um, I guess following from uh, winning Startup Weekend, um, you know, we worked on it part time here and there, but didn't get anywhere. Um, and then opportunity came up to work on it full time, so I jumped at the chance um, and decided to commit to it. And I think we've come a long way. We've now got about eight and a half thousand users across the world. We've had downloads in 89 countries. Um, we know that our app is being played um, two or three times more than other educational apps across industry benchmarks. People come to the app a lot more frequently and they play it for longer than other educational apps. Um, I think that combining gaming, which is a really exciting area with uh, education, is really cool as well. I think the whole education market is being uh, disrupted with technology and with really innovative thinking. I think a lot of traditional industries are being uh, disrupted with industries that used to rely on like paper-based stuff or, you know, a bit closed to technology. Um, I guess following Winning Startup Weekend, um, we were working at the York Butter Factory. I think working in a co-working space is a really great idea if you can uh, get into one. I'm sure there are a few in um, Adelaide that you could check out. Um, but I think also working from home, also you can save a lot of money as well. Um, so I kind of split my time between, um, a kind of, I guess, a, a office space and, and home. Um, other advice I can give you is, is also to listen to other people's advice. Uh, you know, I, I'm probably not that experienced as an entrepreneur and there are people out there who are, I mean, you're going to hear lots of different advice. So just take in what you can, um, you know, absorb the bits that you like. And sometimes you're going to take, you know, the medicine that you don't like as well. Um, yeah, so I, I guess in the last few weeks, uh, we've been doing some stuff like, uh, like pitching. I pitched at, uh, Innovation Bay. We got shortlisted into the top. Uh, nine and then shortlisted in top four and I flew to Sydney and I pitched there to like a angel group uh, having dinner and then um, I pitched at Aurelius Digital which is uh, something that the Aurelius Digital uh, sorry Adventure Capital guys run as well and that was pretty cool uh, you know pitched to a room of 30 people and I think the more that you pitch the better you get at it and you know the kind of questions that people kind of like throw at you and you know you get pretty good at answering them and, and yeah uh, other tips I can give you like when presenting um, uh, have some backup slides like what I mean by that is we had an appendix um, this is, uh, when I pitched like last week with some other things that people typically ask me so it might be like uh, I don't know like, like your financials for example or um, 
user acquisition or you know stuff, stuff like that. It just shows that you, you've thought about these kind of things. Um, I think that you know working in startups it, it is glamorized quite a fair bit. Like you read TechCrunch and VentureBeat and GigaOM, and you know it is fun, but it's also really hard work. Um, it, sometimes it can be quite a, a struggle. Um, you got to be very uh, self motivated. Um, you got to set goals for yourself as well, and it's going to be hard. Um, and sometimes, you know, I think to myself, uh, you know, it, it's it's a grind, and who who can last, uh, who can survive, and who can thrive in this kind of environment? Because there's a lot of unknowns, and um, you know, sometimes you you're working away until like two or three in the morning. You're trying to make the, the needle move uh, to acquire more users or to generate revenue. And we've got to a certain point where we're generating revenue. And I think uh, that's underestimated by a lot of startups. If you can actually get there, that's actually quite significant. Um, and then, you know, to reach profitability is another thing. And there's this huge battle between like uh, user acquisition and, and uh, do you focus on that or do you focus on making money? I think it's a balance of both. Um, so we've, we've got some promising stats. We've got 8,500 users. Um, you know, putting on anywhere between 50 to 100 users a day. Um, I think also getting paid users is also very important. Will people actually pay for your product? What's the business model behind it? And a lot of people say that like um, startups, it, it's like validating a set of like assumptions um, in the real world because like you know you can come up with those ideas um, and you can say it's going to work or not going to work, but you won't know until. You get data coming back, people actually using the product um, and, and getting some analysis. So, you know, you install like, you know, Google Analytics or uh, Flurry if you're doing like mobile type stuff. Um, but everyone can always get better analytics. Um, and, you know, it was a struggle when at the start of the year, we were getting like one download or zero downloads. But, you know, I had faith in the product because of the data. Like people were using it, people were downloading it and they started to come like, you know, it's five downloads, 10 downloads. People were engaged with the product. Some people would play it for like two minutes. Some would play it for half an hour. So we just uh, keep hacking away at it and and, and keep um, building the product out and, and marketing it as, as such. And right now we're really focused on uh, marketing and some functionality enhancements as well. Um, I think you've got to figure out what, what works for you in terms of marketing and then start cranking it up. Um, but you have to carry out a lot of experiments and, and see what works. Um, I guess the other thing that I would tell you is that um, you do think about your startup a lot. Um, you know, you, you wake up in the morning, you think about it. You think about it late at night. You think about it when you're out. You got to figure out a way to kind of zone out a bit and and just, um, I guess, chill out and do something. So what I do is I go to the movies, or I used to do salsa and then to get back into it. Um, and then you've got hopefully other things going on in your life as well. Um, but I know that you kind of got to be a bit obsessed with your startup uh, to get it off the ground. Um, and some people also ask me about um, working with people you know before, like complete strangers. Um, you know, we had a few members that, that dropped out for various reasons. I think not everyone's going to work out, and sometimes you're going to make a call. Um, I also believe it was a fantastic way to meet um, other people as well, and, and two members have carried on, um, and they offer different skills to what I have, whether it's technical or marketing or creative skills as well, and it's working out maybe doing an audit of what skills you have and what, what you need. Um, you know, you can always hit me up for information. Um, you can find me on Twitter. Um, I'm at InspiredWorlds, or you can go to InspiredWorlds.com, or you can email me at Matthew at NativeTongue.com.